Greetings to you all in our series of discussions on Petas of Law by Ugugiwat Yongo. We have discussed the plot of the novel, the characters and the characterization, the themes and the thematic concerns in the novel. We as well have discussed some of the literary devices used in the novel like the use of images, the use of uh, allegory, and the use of symbols. We discussed it extensively in the previous videos. Today, we are going to be looking at the use of simile and uh, metaphor in Petas of Blood. So if you haven't watched the videos of the other one we discussed before, like the plot summary, the analysis of the novel, the characterization, the themes, and the other uh, literary devices we have discussed previously, uh, do as well to listen to them so that you will have a full understanding of the novel. So today we are going to be concerned with the use of a metaphor and simile. Now the novel as uh, we have discussed earlier, I believe you must have had a little knowledge about the plot, uh, where you have Monira, Wanja, Kariga, and some other characters like Chimeria, and then uh, the situation that before the village of Umarog, before the long journey to the capital of Kenya, in an attempt to seek for help from the members of the parliament. So we saw also that uh, there are several uh, use of literary devices and as a result of that I decided to be discussing them in detail one after another so that is why we did not lump all of them together in one video so that uh, you will be able to understand them in detail and one of the simile or the major simile in the novel is one just perception and uh, from your previous knowledge of the novel, I believe you know that Wanja is one of the major characters in the novel. And so Wanja, who is a lady and because of situation, later became a prostitute. So now she has a, uh, a perception about the Europeans, especially their body, their skin. And then she compared their skin with that of pig in several uh, instances in the novel. One of it is in page 131, uh, if you are using my own version of the novel. And then we saw that uh, he compared their body to that of pig. Why? Because their body probably look fair and it is not as black as that of Wanja's skin. And then we saw that Wanja's perception of Europea's naked body is brought out through the particular comparison to the scheme of pig. So, when a woman she knew brag, talk about getting married to a European, well, one Wanja was not so comfortable with that because to Wanja having a, having a European, having an European as a husband does not all go well with her. So she compared their body to that of pig and then she cannot marry somebody with such kind of skin. Note that what Wanja, Wanja's perception cannot be traced as racism. Rather, because of her experiences with them, because as we saw her characterization, her roles in the novel, she also, uh, she's um, a prostitute who has slept with several people. And I also believe that uh, she has slept with uh, uh, Europeans also. And then because of the way their body uh, are, or probably the way she feel about uh, having sexual experience with them, and then uh, she dislikes such people, and then she compared their naked body to that of a pig. So the use of this simile enhances imagery, while at the same time showing how Wanja find the body of Europeans disgusting and somehow unnatural. You know, uh, Wanja who is an African living in the village of Umarok, probably you can imagine that her skin may be very, very strong, black, thick and strong and uh, a, a, a european who probably uh just traveled to africa no his skin will be soft maybe fair and then uh, it may not look like that of wanja and that could be one of the reasons why wanja detests the body of the europeans so we saw that uh, this comparison also shows that uh, 
for one year to have a sexual affair with a European. That means she needed money so badly. And that would be one of the reasons why she could even have anything with the naked body of a European. So we saw that perception. And then let's look at her. Um, metaphor the similes are not so much in the novel but we have several metaphors and one of them is the metaphor of fire so the metaphor of fire is so that uh, the coming of Kariga to Umarok does not go down well with Munira though Munira welcomed him and then he became an assistant teacher to Munira in this village school but however, Munira was not so comfortable with uh, the coming of Kariga, especially when Kariga began to build the relationship with Wanja, whom Munira was in the relationship with, and at the same time, intending that the relationship would continue. Even when Wanja broke with him, he was not so comfortable and he was angry. So he has stoked a lot of fire, even in his own emotion, in his mind. And then we saw the manifestation of that uh, burning emotions towards the end of the novel when he sets the people ablaze, including Wanja, Munira, uh, Abdullah, Abdallah, um, Kariga, uh, Wanja, and some others who have, you know, at one time or the other, have uh, advances or sexual affair with Wanja. And then we saw that Wanja was able to succeed. Of course, he was, she was rushed to hospital, but she didn't die. And then um, Munira was arrested and prosecuted. So we saw that uh, the metaphor of fire is appropriate. Given what an important motive fire is in the entire text. So, But it is specifically powerful here because we can imagine a small glowing ember that begins to glow. With more intensity, the fire stuck in the mind and even the physical fire, all of them we see the manifestation and the advancement, the growing to cause a lot of uh, disaster in the novel. So the intensity when we stop. So this allows us to understand what is happening to Munira as he listened to the young man before him who were in the brote of Wanja as well. So we have the emotional fire and then we have the physical fire. Both of them consume the characters. The emotional fire consumes Munira because he set others ablaze and then he was arrested, was charged for murder, was charged for uh, other grievous uh, uh, harm. For Wanja, it was grievous harm because Wanja did not die. But for people like uh, Kariga, Abdallah, who died in the fire inferno, uh, Munira was charged for. Um, for murder. So you could see the emotional fire also consume him, even though the physical fire did not consume him. Now, we have another metaphor in the novel, which is very popular. We saw that a Kariga is pleased to be teaching at the school as an assistant teacher to Munira. Now, both of them, that is Munira and Wanja, used to bury their head in the class. It is not physical burying, but they are more concerned or focused more in their activities and responsibilities in the school. And at a particular time, we saw that Munira began to, to withdraw to himself, especially when the relationship between Wanja and Kariga began. So he withdrew to himself more. He is more into himself just like an ostrich, and then he is more concerned about his duty in the village of Umarong, that is, to teach in the village school. So the relationship is built with people like uh, Kariga, Abdallah, some members of the community, and even Waja, we are uh, deteriorating. Because he wanted to have Wanja to himself, and Wanja, not comfortable with the relationship again, broke the relationship with him, and then engaged or started the relationship with uh, Kariga. So can you imagine in such situation in reality? That okay, you are the head teacher. 
the lady you are dying for, uh, the, lady, the lady you are dating, uh, broke off with you and began to date your assistant teacher, your subordinate. Such may be very traumatizing, especially when all of you are living in the same area and teaching in the same school and then the lady, you see the lady and your subordinate uh, uh, playing love or probably uh, working together a uh, romantic move together all the time in the village and you can see that uh, such thing could build a lot of emotion especially anger and then can make somebody to withdraw to himself or to herself now we have another metaphor the metaphor of an outsider who is an outsider in this novel now at the beginning of the novel when Munirar came to the village of Umoro he was considered as an outsider. In fact, he considered himself an, as an outsider. Why? Because the villagers believe that he is going to go very soon. He's just coming to teach and then spend some days or probably months and then leave like other teachers have been doing. But we saw that Munira integrated into the community. He became part of the people. And then some students who were discouraged from coming to school as a result of a uh, no stable teacher or not no teacher that stay for long in the community began to come to school now he feel that okay he's part of umarogo but when the relationship between him and wanja broke down and wanja started the relationship with kariga we saw that uh, he began to have the feeling of the sense of an outsider again he withdrew to himself several times and then we saw that uh, his free relationship, as he become more involved in his Christian faith, also contributed to his in being outsider. You can see that a uh, Kariga, somebody who is very playful, especially with women, Abdallah, somebody who say even alcohol. So when he became more Christian like that is Munira, he now have a form of uh, no informal relationship with them. Because maybe the lifestyle of them, Wanja, maybe somebody who sleep around, and then Abdallah selling alcohol and other things. So he probably his fate also began to affect his relationship with the people. And then coupled with the disengagement between him and Wanja also made him to have that feeling of a, an outsider. So the metaphor of someone who does not live at a certain house but is standing in front of it perhaps confused and lonely is an apt way to describe Munira's growing estrangement and status as an outsider in Umarok village now look at another one that is Wanja's dream what did Wanja dream about in the novel Wanja dream of having a good life he dream of a bright future and one guy reflect on the choices she has made and the life she has led so she think i'm quoting her now and what a life she had carried dreams in a broken vessel looking back now she could not even see a trail of the vanished dream and expectation it was chimeria who had bought a hole into the vessel that was true but she had let him now this is the portrayal of a uh, wanja by umgugi wantiongo now just as the content of the container leak because of the hole that was how the dream of wanja also vanishes we saw that okay he became a prostitute and later he sold the land he built a brother and then he became an independent um, uh, prostitute in the community whose uh, render services to uh, both uh, native and foreigners but we saw that a dad does not fulfill her dream she was still troubled she does not fulfill the dream of her life so this is an effective metaphor comparing having hope and dream with having some sort of liquid in a jar that is actually leaking the entire journey leaking the entire journey due to a hope so when you had dreams yes but Kimeria took them away from her and what happened she was she believed was complicit 
She permitted Kimeria to do that. And you know that Kimeria was the person that uh, the camp in his house went, they traveled to King Shashat in the capital of Kenya to, uh, to, to meet with the members of the parliament. So now that jar of dream is no more, one just dreams also no more, or probably empty. So these are the major use of metaphor and uh, um, simile in the novel. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell and um, you will be notified in our previous video when our previous video when our next video is uploaded our next video will be on the use of a uh, stream of consciousness the narrative techniques the moods in the novel and the use of atmosphere we are going to discuss all that in our coming video make sure you subscribe to the channel click the notification bell so that you get notified and uh, you we also have the privilege of going through such uh, such a uh, uh, literary devices so that you have full understanding of the novel okay thank you and um have a good day